Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the difference between these four types of switches. We have the SPST, so single pole, single throw. Then we have the single pole, double throw. Then we have the double pole, single throw. And then we have the double pole, double throw. I have them laid out here and I'm going to go through each one step by step, showing you the layout, how to connect them, how they work, and I'll also show you a circuit diagram of how you would use it. Now, in order to perform these tests, I have a meter with some crocodile leads. The meter is set to continuity, and there I'll switch on the buzzer. And what that means is when I short out the leads, a buzzer will make a sound. There you can hear the buzzer, and also notice the resistance is low. Say for example, I'm measuring the resistance or the continuity across the screwdriver, this being a metallic rod. And as you can see, when I measure it, it's coming up as a short circuit. This is a dead short. The resistance is very low. It's, that sign is telling me it's a very low impedance path. As you can see there is my short circuit. Right, with the single pole, single throw, we have one input and one output. So here is an example of a single pole, single throw switch. This can be considered the input and that can be considered the output. You can see that the switch can only open and close a single circuit. Here's an example of a circuit. At the moment it is open, no current is flowing. When I close the switch, I will effectively short out those terminals and then current can therefore flow. Testing it with a multimeter, I'm going to put my one set of crocodile leads there and the other set here. And you can see that the switch is already closed and if I open it, the meter is now saying offline or open circuit. And when I close the switch, it's a dead short. This is a push button switch, but it is still a single pole, single throw. Look, there are only two terminals. So if I go there and if I go there. Right, so I've got the one lead over there and the one lead over there, but there are only two terminals and watch. Off, on, off, on. So these two switches are both single pole, single throw, but have different packaging. Now over here, I've got two light switches. They look pretty much the same, but if I flip them around, this one only has two terminals, an input and an output. But look at this one. This one has a third terminal. So while these switches both look similar and they both can be pressed in the same manner, the electrical connection differs slightly. This is now called the single pole double throw switch. Right, so having a look at the single pole double throw switch, we can see that we have one input but two outputs. So there are three connection points. Now, so if we call this the pole, and this metal link over here is the lever, which is either shorting out that connection or shorting out that connection. So this lever can move, as you can see, it, it can either short out that or it can short out that. So if you have a look at option two, if I change the switch's orientation, you, you can see that I've now shorted out from the input to the other terminal. So the way I explain this is this thing is almost the throw. So this link here is like the throw. So we have a single pole, but double throw. You can see that this can have two separate positions. And that is how I describe the double throw part. So one input, two outputs. And now having a look at the circuit diagram, at the moment, current can already flow like that. And back to the supply. So at the moment, circuit A, this is the load of A, circuit A has current flow. Circuit B has no current flow. When the switch moves like that, and now it is closed to this side, no longer closed there. Now what we have is the current flowing in load B. But load A is no longer connected to the supply. Right, now going back to this switch, you can see that was the single pole, single throw, but now we are working with the single pole, double throw, and you can see there are three connection points here. So I'm going to put my lead in the middle, that will be the input, and remember we have two outputs. I'm going to put my other lead over here, and you can see the switch is in that position. The minute I depress it, look at that. It is now saying less than one ohm, dead short. You can hear the buzzer, it has closed that circuit. Watch what happens when I depress the switch again. Look, it's open circuit. Closed, open. Now I move this to the other output terminal. You can see that it is already in the closed position. But now when I depress the switch in the other way, you can see it is now open circuit. Closed, 
open. While it is an open circuit on that output, notice it is a closed circuit on the other output. If I open circuit on this output, notice it is a closed circuit on the other output. Right, so there, to sum up your single pole, double throw, we can throw the link to either that output or that output. Therefore, we can either close load A and current will flow, or we can move the lever to the other circuit and we can close load B, having current flowing, but load A becomes disconnected. Common use of the switch is in the one position, maybe you want to have a sleep mode, maybe an LED telling you it's sleep mode, and when you depress it into the other mode, maybe that is the awake mode. This is a common feature on a photocopying machine, for example. Right, now just some other varieties. Here I've got a limit switch. This is a single pole double throw. It still has the three terminals, one input, two output. It just looks a bit different because the switch function is operated by this lever, as you can see. So if you have a look at this, if I put my input over here, then over here is one of my outputs. You can hear the meter and see the reading. And watch what happens when I depress this. Open circuit. Closed. Open. Closed. But look what happens when I go to the other output. It's now open. But in order to close it, I have to depress this. Closed. Open. Closed. So sometimes the switches come in different packages for different applications. Right, the next one is called the double pole single throw. Right, we can see we've got one pole, but we've got another pole over here. Independent from that pole. So we've got two poles. Each pole has only one link to throw closed. So we have a single throw here and then also a single throw here. So even though it has a double pole, they are isolated from each other. This is like the single pole, single throw, but duplicated. So there you can see I have one single pole, single throw and another single pole, single throw in the same package. Right, so here's an example of the double pole, single throw. There's one switch and there's another switch. If I take you back to the single pole, single throw, can you see I had one input, one output? Well, on the double pole, single throw, there's one input, one output, but then there's another side with one input, one output, but these are isolated. You see they are written isolated. It's like having two single pole, single throws in the same package. When I close the switch, both these links close, allowing current to flow in the load A and current flowing in the load B. When I open the link, no current flows in either A or B. Alright, so I'm going to put my one crocodile lead there and my other crocodile lead there. Notice the buzzer has not sounded, so the resistance is considered an open circuit. When I depress the switch, notice that it becomes a short circuit. Alright, so I've got my one crocodile lead there on the input and one on the output. And notice that it is currently an open circuit, the buzzer is not operating, the resistance is considered an open circuit, and as I close the switch, notice the buzzer sounds and the resistance is now very low. Open circuit, closed circuit. Now there's another set of terminals over there. So what I'm going to do is bring another meter and show you the continuity. Right, so I have another meter here. I'm going to just use these test leads and listen to the buzzer when it's a short circuit. Short circuit. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these like that. So now I've got both terminals connected. One side of the switch is connected to the meter on the right and the other switch is connected to the meter on the left. Now as I depress the switch, notice both meters are now reading a short circuit. If I show you the ohms, it is a very low ohm ridge, less than 2 ohms, considered short circuit. And if I go back to the buzzer, you can hear it. Now when I open circuit the switch, you can see both meters are now showing a open circuit. Now I want to show you that these are isolated. If you see, I'm going across the switch now, there to there. So what I'm doing is I'm actually measuring the resistance between there and there. Notice that my meter is not making any sound. Look, whether I have the switch open or closed, can you see that it is isolated? Those terminals are separated from each other, which means you could have independent circuits on each side here. And if I show you the outputs, I'm now measuring the resistance between there and there. 
and notice it doesn't make a difference which way I rock the switch it is still open circuit right so I've showed you this diagram and you can see that the loads are connected on this side but here is another diagram using the same switch what you should see is that I have an AC circuit on this side for load A and on this side I happen to have a DC circuit for load B these are completely independent from each other just because both switches are housed in the same package does not mean they are joined so when I close the links the current will flow but these are completely isolated circuits Right, the last one is the double pole double throw. So we can see I've got one pole there, one pole there. So that is why it's called a double pole. And each pole has two throws. Each pole can throw into two positions. You see that we can throw the link there or we can throw the link there. And then on this pole, we can throw the link there or we can throw the link there. So it's double pole, double throw. So in this case, we actually have six connections on the switch. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two input, four output. When the switch is in this orientation, you can see that current will flow like that, no current will flow there. Current will flow like that, no current will flow there. So we have two independent circuits here. Then in the second option, when the switch is toggled into the other orientation, you can see current can flow there, no current will flow there, current will flow there, no current will flow there. So we have another two circuits so all in all we have four circuits so having a look at this you can see the link is in that position and I've got load a1 load a2 that is the one side of the switch and you might recall that that's the same as the single pole double throw layout but now what we're doing is we're putting two of those into the same switch housing so there's the one and there's the other now this is a toggle switch and this is a small one but nevertheless it works in the same way can you see there are six terminals there so on the top side we've got one input two outputs and then look at the other side of the switch the bottom side one input two output so we've got two input connections and four output connections that is why we have six connections all together on this small toggle switch so having a look at the top section here we've got one input two outputs look it actually says on there to there and then on there to there showing you that you've got two output positions so for the top part of the switch you can see that I've got a single pole double throw and then for the bottom part of the switch I have a single pole double throw so all together I have double pole double throw although this part of the switch is isolated from this part of the switch I will also take the measurements and show you I'm just going to now explain to you what will happen when I close the switch right the switch is currently in that position current can flow there through that and back to the supply and then in the bottom part of the switch in the other section here current can flow there into load B1 and back to the supply so we'll have two circuits at the moment then when we move the switch like that this opens up and now we'll have current flowing in the load A2 load and back to the supply and current will flow from this supply to load B and back to the supply. So now gone from that circuit to that and that. Keeping in mind that they are independent from each other. Right, so I've got smaller crocodile clips for this smaller switch and I'm first going to measure the top row. Now I'm going to put this crocodile lead in the middle there for the input and this one, the black one, for that side over there. Now you can see the meter on the left there, it's showing that it is an open circuit and as I do that, notice it is a short circuit. Open, short. But if it's a short circuit on this side, then watch what happens when I go to this output. Right, so I've now moved the lead to the other output and notice that it's an open circuit and look at that. Closed, open, closed open but now look at the bottom row we have this duplicated we have another single pole double throw switch at the bottom there so it's two in one here now if I go to that side notice close circuit open and if I move this to the other output closed open closed open so if it's open on that one it must be closed on this one right you can hear it that also means that that input and that output will close at the same time as that input and that output 
that means that that and that will become a short circuit and that and that will become a short circuit. Watch, short circuit, and now when I move the leads to the top row, short circuit. So input, output, output. Input, output, output. But this output and that output are isolated from each other. That output and that output are also isolated from each other. That input and that input are isolated from each other. I will demonstrate shortly. I'm connecting the one lead there and the other lead over there. So that effectively means I'm putting an ohmmeter between there and there, trying to measure the resistance between there and there. Remember I said that these are isolated. So if they're isolated, it should be an open circuit. Right, so you can see my meter. Whether I toggle the switch right or left, you can see that the meter still says open circuit. And if I show you across the outputs, it doesn't matter whether the switch is toggled right or left, it is an open circuit. So if I open this up, you will see two independent switches inside this one casing. And I'll quickly show you inside a switch so you get an idea. Right, I'm just removing the rocker. Right, so there's inside the switch and you can see there is a link that moves. So in this case, there's the terminals and this link rocks between the one side and the other. As you rotate the switch, it is spring loaded and the rocker either shorts out the middle and the left terminal or the middle and the right terminal. So in the case of a switch like this, two of these rockers independent from each other. That is why they are isolated from each other. So going back to this diagram, you can have four independent circuits with this double pole, double throw switch. Right, so I hope that was helpful and thanks for watching and cheers.